Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day to everyone. I trust that every one of us, without exemption, already sense the manifest presence of God beyond our emotions, but in our inner man, in our hearts, in our spirit, that indeed that God is here and is here to strengthen, to encourage, to challenge, and to build us up. Uh, if you have the Bible, please open with me in Zechariah chapter 4 in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 4, starting from verse 1. This is uh, the word of the Lord uh, using the angel to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, uh, who went back from exile to rebuild the temple of God that was ruined. And the title of the message of the Lord uh, that is primarily uh, bless my heart and this is my prayer every single day. I acknowledge that the longer you walk with the Lord you sense your need that you need Him every day. Every day or every moment in my life, not only in bad times, but mostly in good times, because good times, that's how we lower our guard, and we need God to guard our hearts. And this is part three of our message that we heard, and the title, The Mark of a Spirit-Filled Life the mark of a spirit-filled life because this is the perfect will of God to all his children, not just to have the Holy Spirit as a seal of our redemption, but he wants us that every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that all of us will be baptized, immersed, all filled continually with the Holy Spirit. And here in Zechariah chapter 4, starting from verse 1, it says, Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me. As a man who is wakened out of his sleep, and he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I am looking. And there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, and one at the right of the bowl, and the other as it is left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me, answered and said to me, Do you not know what this what this what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he said, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Okay. And put your name there. This is the word of the Lord to you and me. Not by might, nor by power but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not Pastor Alex, but says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with the shouts of grace, grace to it. Let's pray, hallelujah. Lord, thank you so much with your manifest presence, Lord, in our midst this morning. Indeed, without your presence, we are nothing, Lord God. But thank you for your faithfulness that never fails. 
that when there are two or three gathered together in your name, surely you will be with us, Lord God, in our midst. And today, Lord, as we listen to your word, Lord, our prayer, give us eyes to see, Lord, the glory and the beauty of Christ. Help us to fix our eyes on him because he is the author, the finisher, and the perfecter of our faith, O oh God, and to bring our, our lives, Lord, into completion. And give us also ears to hear, Lord, what the Holy Spirit has to say. Not our physical ear, Lord, but in our inner man. And heart to receive, O oh God, your word. And cause your word, O oh God, to be planted deeply, Lord, into our hearts. And cause it not just to grow, but to bear fruit. And cause that fruit, Lord, not just 30 or 60, but 100 fold. And not just only 100 fold, Lord, but Lord, with eternal value, O God, that will last forevermore, O God. Lord, I trust you that you are able to do this, Lord, in our lives. Because to you, nothing is impossible, O God. All things that are impossible with us, with man, Lord, are all possible to our God, to our Father, whose only desire and will, Lord, to bless all his children with all spiritual blessings and heavenly blessings, Lord, that is in Christ, so that, Lord, our lives as your children will be the message, the gospel, O oh God, Lord, hallelujah, to lead people to Christ. Most especially, Lord God, for such a times as this, O oh God, that Christ alone, O oh God, is the answer, Lord God, what's going on around the world today, O oh God. And your people, O oh God, is your message, O oh God, hallelujah, to the power of your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Hallelujah, that will, Lord, that will bless them, that will encourage them, that will challenge them, Lord God, and build them up, O oh God. Hallelujah, that they might know, O oh God, that there is no other God but Jesus. And we give you praise today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the bark of a spirit-filled believer or life. So here in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, it tells us at least for me two important truths about the person and work or ministry of the Holy Spirit in relation to our Christian life here on earth. First, it tells us in verse 6 that the only way to do God's will because we are called to do God's will, as far as spiritual is concerned, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not by our human ability, human strength, wisdom, and willpower, but by the power of the Spirit alone, as far as the Lord is concerned. To Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, who used by God, to rebuild the temple of God, the Lord himself said to Zerubbabel that the only way to rebuild the temple of God during the time uh, as a place uh, to worship God, uh, the Lord said to him, not by any human strength or human ability, human wisdom, and will power, but by the Holy Spirit alone. It's sad to say because many churches today, they're trying to build a church with their own willpower and ability without the power of the Holy Spirit. And as followers of Christ, we are called also if you consider yourself born again, saved, follower of Christ, you are being called by God. Not just to go to heaven. 
but to build up the church, to make disciples, to strengthen the body of Christ, or to encourage and challenge the body of Christ, which is the church. And the church is the bride of Christ. But the only way to do this, every follower of Christ must be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. The Bible says that if you receive Christ, you already have the Holy Spirit. But it's one thing to have the Holy Spirit, and it's another thing to be immersed, filled, and overflow of the Holy Spirit. To be saved and to go to heaven, what you need is the Holy Spirit. It's to receive Jesus Christ and you will receive the Holy Spirit. But if you want to serve the Lord mightily, you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So this message is to everyone who's desire to lead your family to Christ. To be useful in the hands of God. To make an eternal impact in people's lives. And to make your life count here on earth. I don't know about you, but for me, I don't want to waste the gift of God that God has given me. I want to return it to God and use it for His glory. But the only thing to do this I must be filled continually with the Holy Spirit 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. Because the word of the Lord I have said to Zerubbabel is the same word to every follower of Christ today. To you and me. That we are called to build up the body of Christ not only in our local church, but wherever the Lord sent us to go, to make disciples, to strengthen, to encourage and challenge, we need a constant infilling of the Holy Spirit. Every day, we have to immerse ourselves with the presence of Christ. Secondly, in verse 7, it tells us that the only way to overcome all the oppositions, all obstacles, all or hindrances, or all hindrances, no matter how big or difficult it might be to do God's will through our lives is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember this, beloved in the Lord, the moment you decide to serve God, all hell will break loose. Remember that. But that's expected because Satan will not allow us to succeed without a fight, even though he was already defeated. But it tells us that we can overcome all opposition, all obstacles, all hindrances, no matter how big or difficult it might be if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that as Christians, we have three enemies. We have three enemies. Number one is the devil. The devil is always there continually, and he is working double time, and he is like a roaring lion seeking someone home to be devour. And it's like a thief to steal the joy of the Lord, to kill and to destroy. So it's, that's our number one obstacle, hindrances, opposition, continually. Okay, even when you are alone. Okay. That, and the devil always attack our minds. And number two, our enemies as Christians, 
the philosophy and system of the world. The system and the philosophy of the world today our enemy is not the people, but the system and the philosophy of the world because that is ruled by Satan. So we have to identify our enemies, that our enemies is not the people, but behind the people, the spirit behind the people, the spirit of Satan and the spirit of the world ruled by Satan. And third enemies is our own flesh. So we have the enemies from without, and we have the enemies from within. Because even though we already have a new heart, a new spirit, and with the Holy Spirit, but our flesh is still there. And the Bible says the flesh and the Holy Spirit is always in contradiction. Our own desire, our own plans, an own will. There's always a tug of war between the desire, the plan, and the will of God. And besides from these three enemies, we have obstacles in life. Our overwhelming circumstances that we go through every day. And maybe some of you today, you, you already experienced this. Because these overwhelming obstacles, it could be physical, like physical sickness, it could be financial or financial difficulties. It could be mental, okay, and you need peace. You're, you're always worried. And it could be emotional, okay, and it could be relational. Your relation with your family, your friends, your coworkers, and also it could be spiritual. But thanks be to God because all this obstacle or opposition that will hinder us to do God's will, we can overcome. But not with our own plans, with our own power, but only by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can say together with Zerubbabel in verse 7, Who are you, O great mountains of obstacle? Before Shirobabel, or before you and me, you shall become a plain. Okay? And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. And this is true to Shirobabel because Shirobabel was being filled with the Holy Spirit. And in John chapter 4, verse 4, it tells us the promise of God for his children. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. So the word them is plural. Uh, it's re it could refer to Satan, to the world, and to ourselves. And it on, and says, you could overcome because he who is in you, the Holy Spirit, the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, Spirit or the Spirit of Christ is greater or far stronger okay, than he who is in the world. So let's always remember this, that the Holy Spirit abides in us and he is always there. And if he allow us to empower us, we can live an overcoming life. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. Because Jesus or the Holy Spirit is far greater and stronger than the devil. Remember that. He's far stronger and greater than our flesh. That's why when we are tempted, just pray. God, I need you today. Give me the strength. And God is more willing and able to strengthen our inner man. That no matter what you go through, you will come out from your circumstances victorious. With a shout of a voice of praise, grace, grace, and also with thanksgiving. 
Romans 8.1, it tells us, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Because God who is in us, to the power of the Holy Spirit, is more powerful and stronger than anyone else in this world. And Romans chapter 8, verse 36 to 37, it tells us, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. So if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are more than conquerors, not just conquerors, or not just being a survivor, but more than conquerors and become a blessing to others. So it's very clear that the answer to everything in our Christian life here on earth is not the politician. But Jesus, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. That's why if there is one most important prayer that we need to pray always with all desperation, persistence, and faith is to ask the Father to fill us with the Holy Spirit continually. For me, if there is one most important prayer that I need to pray always, with all desperation, persistence, and faith, you could pray, Lord, remove all these obstacles. But oftentimes, God will not remove that obstacles like Apostle Paul because it will do more harm to us than good. Yes. Because when you are living a comfort, comfortable life, that's how we lower our guard. But we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually so that in good times or in bad times or even in a very bad times, you will still serve the Lord. Do His will. Do His work. And become his message, his instruments to bless others, starting your family. Yes. But the only way to do this, to defeat our enemies, and to walk above all our circumstances, and to become a blessing to others, we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit continually. For me, I'm not satisfied of being saved. I'm not satisfied just to go to heaven. I said, Lord, you did so much to me. Fill me with your spirit to bless your name. Fill me with your spirit to bless others. That before I live in this world, all your commands, every commands, I will obey. And all your promises, I want to experience it. Not just claim it to be a blessing to others. And if we obey, so but for me, but for me, the clear mark of a spirit-filled life, I know there's so many people in the Bible that we can uh, say that we can see that they are truly filled with the Holy Spirit. But for me, the clear mark of a spirit-filled life that bless my heart and challenge me. Number one is Jesus. Number one is Jesus. For me, the clear mark of a spirit-filled life 
continually that bless my heart and challenges me is Jesus. And number two is Apostle Paul. And if we obey their teaching and follow their example, I believe we will never be wrong. If we obey the teaching of Jesus, the teaching of Paul, and follow the example, I believe we will never be wrong. Or we'll never be led astray. Or being proud of our accomplishment. Being critical, judgmental, look down other people like the Pharisee. If we are being proud of our accomplishment, critical, judgmental, look down other people, that's the mark that you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because Paul did not do that. Jesus did not do that. So I know that when I begin to look down other people and being proud of my accomplishment, I know who is in the throne. It's not Jesus. It's not the Holy Spirit, but me. And I don't want to become like the Pharisee. You know the Pharisee, the farsighted. And one of the clear mark of a spirit life, spirit filled life from the life of Apostle Paul that truly blessed my heart and challenged me. You know, I used to pray, Lord, help me to become like Apostle Paul. But when I study his life, about his sufferings, I said, Lord, I need more grace for this. I need more grace for this. Because in spite of all his sufferings, his main concern is not his own suffering. The church. To build up the church. He is not self-focus of his own suffering. But his primary focus, his deep concern is the church. The body of Christ to build up the church. And not just look at, it's not only one church, but it says all the churches. So now I know that if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will no longer focus on one church, but the whole body of Christ. And his desire is not to exalt yourself, to be known, but to build them up, to strengthen them, to encourage them, to disciple them and say, you can make it, brother. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Not only by your words, but your life. You are willing to be spent and spent. Willing to sacrifice to build up the body of Christ. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why for me I said, the life of Paul is really bless my heart and it's challenged me big time. And if there is one person aside from Jesus Christ to follow, it's Apostle Paul. Because Apostle Paul is the only one who say, follow me as I follow Christ. I don't want to follow the example of David. He defeated Goliath, but he was defeated by Bathsheba. You know, Bathsheba is much stronger than Goliath. I don't like to follow the example of Samson. Because Delilah is much stronger than the lion. But we can defeat all the temptations when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So for me, I, you know, I really appreciate the people who walk before us, but the only one person that I need to follow, aside from Jesus Christ, is Apostle Paul. I know his shoes is too big for me. That's why I cry out to God every day, Lord, fill me.
with the Holy Spirit. Because in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, Paul said, In whatever state I am, or in the translation, regardless of my circumstances in life, whether difficult, very difficult, bad, very bad, or good, I am content. And that is the mark of a spirit-filled life from the life of Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. I think this is read because this is for, I'm sorry, this is for Filipino because it's called Philippines, so. <laughs> but uh, all believers. Okay, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Paul said, For verse, that's why I can see. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Paul said, Now that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Paul is content being abound or abased, or whatever state he went through. Paul was content. This is one of the clear mark of a spirit-filled life believer, like Apostle Paul. Perfect contentment in whatever state he was. And this contentment brings with him fullness of joy always and peace of God that surpasses all understanding. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, whatever situation that you go through, you will experience perfect contentment. And that perfect contentment will go, is coupled with, will bring to you fullness of joy from the Lord. And also peace of God that surpasses all understanding. That's why Paul, in chapter 4, verse 4, he said, Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. How these things happen to Paul? Paul experienced so much difficulties in his life, but he's able to say, what is a secret? Not Victoria's secret. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul does not have just the Holy Spirit, have the Holy Spirit, but he was always immersed, baptized, and filled continually with the Holy Spirit. That's why even he was in prison. Philippians, when he wrote this, he was in prison, and his feet is intact, but he's able to build up to encourage the brethren. Wow! And say, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And then verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. This is not just mere words from Paul. This is his testimony. He testifies experience. And it happens to him because he was continually filled with the Holy Spirit. And in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, I think all of us knew this, right? That one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is what? Love, joy, and peace. Now, if you lose your joy and peace, that's the mark that you need, the feeling of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that you lose your salvation, but you need a fresh in feeling of the Holy Spirit. 
then you will experience joy, unspeakable joy, and full of glory, not sometimes, not oftentimes, but always in the Lord. And also peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. And in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it tells us about the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, the Bible says. But what? It's righteousness, it's peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So if you, are, if you want to experience real joy, amen, hallelujah, and peace, you need the Holy Spirit. Spirit to overflow you. And because Apostle Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit continually, he could rejoice even when he was locked up in prison with his feet in stocks. And we could see that in Philippians and Acts chapter, uh, what do you call this? If, uh, uh, Acts chapter 16. He's even to rejoice even when he was in prison. And like I was witness that. And he and also wrote, uh, in even to rejoice. He never complained. That's why, for me, if I complain or murmur with my circumstances, that's the mark that I'm leaking. I need the fresh and feeling of the Holy Spirit. So don't be condemned sometimes that, you know, that's why there's a lot of people is called fruit tester. Okay, I remember with Pastor Ray, the, what do you call this, the, uh, when we uh, uh, get the, our, our, our boarding pass, this guy is really, I said, Pastor Ray, he's a fruit tester. <laughs> but in my heart, my fruit is, is down. <laughs> I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I need, I need, because my, down, my, my fruit is really down, so. I don't know about him, but in my heart, it's already done so because I get mad to him. So I said, Lord, forgive me and fill me again with the Holy Spirit. I want to go to the mission filled with joy, <laughs> not to grumbling my spirit. How could be a, a blessing to others when you are, you know, grumbling and complaining with your situation? Lord, I want to be real first. You no, know? pick your word real to me first, you know, because I don't want to, to stand before them, you know. Uh, Okay, so it says here in verse 22, Acts chapter 16, verse 22, it says, Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore up their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But in verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas were complaining. We're murmuring. What the Bible says? We're praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And lo and behold, result, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. And we consider miracles happen when we choose to praise and worship the Lord in difficult times. You'll only be blessed and experience true freedom but other people around you. And here, not only people got saved, delivered, but also build a church in Philippi through their suffering. It's beloved in the Lord. Some of you to us will experience suffering, but God knows what He is doing. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20, it indicates that the natural result of being filled with the Holy Spirit is an outflow of praise to God. Uh, 
if you are filled with the Holy Spirit continually, you don't need to be pushed to praise the Lord or to stir up their emotion. Kung sa Pilipino pa, wala ba kayong mga kamay at paa dyan? Para yung mga para po malapag sa Diyos, you, you don't need to push people to shout and praise to God when that person is continually filled with the Holy Spirit. And that person will not just praise and worship to God in the church, but every day, you cannot stop that person to praise the Lord. Even in difficult times. If that person totally filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why if you, cannot, if you cannot praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord in your difficult times, beloved, don't be filled with that. Come to God. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. God knows that you cannot do that because it's not by your might nor by power. You need a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. God knows that already. So don't be feel condemned and discouraged that, you know, because you cannot praise the Lord in your difficult times. God knows that. What the Lord is trying to say to you, my son, my daughter, come to me and ask me to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And I am more willing and able to fill you with the Holy Spirit so that in your difficult times, you could praise me, you can thank me, and when you thank me and praise me, I will come down and manifest my glory and power. And then you will experience true blessing to bless others like Apostle Paul. And also, you will not just praise the Lord like Apostle Paul, but you will, like, you will praise the Lord like Habakkuk. You know Habakkuk? Sa Tagalog, ang kusinerong mahabang magluto. Habakkuk. So, translation. Okay? So, you know, I'm being blessed and challenged the life of Habakkuk. And I said, Lord, I want this. If other Christians do like this, but I want this. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I could be like Apostle Paul and Habakkuk. Kahit mahaba sa magluto, kahit gutom na ako. But Lord, uh, I just want to follow the example. Okay? So Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, Habakkuk 3, verse 17, nor fruit be nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 19, The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like theirs feet and he will make me walk on my high heels so beloved it happens to Habakkuk and if you it will happen to you to you and me if you come to God to ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit And also, if we are continually filled with the Holy Spirit, we can truly believe that God is sovereign. That's one of the mark of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You truly believe in your heart that God, who is your Father, as we have seen today, today all things is what? Possible. Our God who sits on the throne, all-powerful and sovereign and in absolute control of everything. But it doesn't stop there. But also you can believe that he, that he make everything that befalls you and me works together for our good. Then 
we can truly be content in all our circumstances and praise the Lord like Apostle Paul with thanksgiving and also Habakkuk ang kusinero mahabang mag luto. But if we often complain and murmur in our situation like the Israelites. You know the Israelites? For 40 years, they did not pass the test. Because every time they were conf when, every time when God allowed them to experience trials, they complain and more and more. That's why God made a new covenant. And I said, I will make a new covenant. So that you will not complain anymore. Okay? In the covenant, I will wash you with my own blood. I remove all the idols. I will make you clean. It doesn't say, God will not, he will not expect us to clean ourselves. But it said, I will wash you and make you clean by your own blood. Number two, I will give you a new heart. Brand new heart. Like a brand new car. Number two, number three, I will give you a new spirit. Kasi yung dating is spirit sa'yo is like spiritista ka. Number two, I will give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will empower us, enable us to do God's will. Because God knows it's not by our might nor by power to do His own work, His own will as far as spiritual is concerned. That's why He breathed His disciples with the Holy Spirit and also He baptized them with the Holy Spirit in order to carry on His purpose, to lead others, more people to Christ, to experience the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then secondly, the mark of a spirit-filled life from the life of Apostle Paul is not only perfect contentment in whatever state he was, or regardless of his circumstances that he went through, but also living a crucified life. You know, if you are living a crucified life, that's the mark that you are truly being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit or the Holy Spirit uh, will lead us to live a crucified life. We cannot crucify our self-life, our self-will, self-gratification, comfort plans, unless we are empowered with the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul is able to say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself. Paul is able to say that because he was filled continually with the Holy Spirit. But if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot say that I have been crucified with Christ. I'm so alive with my own flesh. And you know if you are so alive with your own flesh, you are leaking. And you need a fresh and feeling of the Holy Spirit every day. Every day. That's why when God commanded the Israelites, just take the manna every day. That's why we can't rely on our past experience. Beloved, no matter how glorious and victorious your past, you cannot rely with that. Your experience with the Lord, it should be every day. Don't rely on past food, past victories, past experience, past anointing, past victories. That's why when they gathered more than a day, it spoiled. And the Bible says, you are what you eat. But if you eat fresh food every day, you are what you eat, right? And people will look at you, why are you so healthy? So victorious. So beloved. That's why after this, when you go home, continue to eat to the praise of God. Don't go back to your old life. And, it, and Paul also said that only he is able to say that I have been crucified with Christ 
but he also said, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of Christ. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have only one boasting, not your accomplishment, not your past victories. Not your children, not anyone, but only the cross of Christ. The Christ who died for our sins. And he said, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For me, this is my hard time. Lord, I'm so in love with the world. But how can I, I live a crucified life to the world? And the Lord said to me, you need me. I know you cannot do it. You need me. If you want to live a crucified life, like me, like Paul, you need a constant feeling of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, this, when Paul said this in Galatians 2.20, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, this is a testimony of Apostle Paul. Paul is not like a Pharisee. And also, it's not like me. The, some, must, sometimes, or oftentimes, I speak right word, but it's not true to my life. And I said, Lord, help me to practice first what I preach. I said to God, Lord, I need you. I need you every moment. And in Luke 9, 23, Jesus himself said, uh, challenged all the people who wants to follow him. Because during that time, Jesus, most of the people followed him because of miracles. You know, when you feed people uh, about physical things, people will make you king. But Jesus is not after for crowd, not only after physical things. He is after even few people, but willing to die for himself. I said, Lord, I want that. That before I live in this world, help me. Give me the strength to give everything to you as a token of my gratitude, what you have done to me. Not for words, but with a grateful heart, what you have done to me. And this is, I have said, and this challenge is what? He said, if anyone comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow if anyone decides to come after me, he did not say, okay, you can go to heaven. But he said, you know, heaven is the byproduct. So don't worry about heaven when you're in Christ because it's forgiven. But he said, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, not once in a while, and follow me. What you're saying to us, that the true mark of being called the true disciples of follower of Christ when we deny ourselves, take up our own cross daily, our own cross, remember that your spouse is not your own cross. Okay. Like Jesus and like Paul, but the only way to do this, perhaps again, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. You know, my calling to my wife is to love my wife as Christ loved the church. Not when my wife honor me, respect me, and sometimes he called me my Lord. <laughs> but Lord, this thing is not true to me. I said, Lord, I know. That's why I provide the Holy Spirit. Come to me, and I will fill you. And the way to be filled with the Holy Spirit to the overflow, like rivers of living water, number one, if we thirst for it. With all desperation, persistence, and persistence. Number two, when we come to Jesus continually, not to any man, come to Jesus. That's why you don't need to go to to the church or to the pastor to fill you with the Holy Spirit, even in your prayer closet. 
God is able to fill you the Holy Spirit to the overflow. If you have these three things, thirst for it with all desperation and persistence. Number two, come to Jesus continually and truly believe in Him that when you are thirst, when you come and believe, He will fill you with the Holy Spirit to the overflow so that you can be a blessing to others. Most especially to your family. Beloved, life is too short and Jesus is coming very soon. And if there is a time that we need to pray to God, Lord, fill me to the Holy Spirit to be a blessing to others, it's now. Look at the world today. They're in chaos. They're in turmoil. And they need somebody to bless them, to challenge them, to be a real gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, starting in our family. But the only way to do that when we are thirst for the Holy Spirit, when we come to Jesus continually, not only when we are in need, but you know, every day, and also truly believe that when we come to him, the Lord Jesus is more willing and able to fill us with the Holy Spirit to the overflow like rivers of living water. That wherever the Lord sends you, you will be a blessing. Sometimes you need to speak only your presence. So Jesus invitation again to us again. He said, now if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said or promised, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your mercy. That fresh in you every morning. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. That despite our unfaithfulness to you, you remain faithful to us because you cannot deny yourself. You are our God who is so good, so gracious, and so loving. And you desire, Lord, to all your children without exemption, that, that Lord, to bless us, Lord, with all the spiritual blessings, the heavenly blessing, Lord, that is in Christ Jesus, O oh God, and the Holy Spirit, O oh God. So that, Lord, we can walk, Lord, in this world, a life that pleases you and be a blessing to others, oh God. Most probably our family. Our family, Lord, they need you. Our family needs you, God, because it is you alone who can save them, heal them, encourage them, and build it up. But your way, Lord, is through our lives. That's why you want us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, our prayer today, Lord, stir up our hunger for more of you, for more of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. And help us, Lord, to draw you closer, not only in bad times, but every day, Lord, and give us the faith to believe that when we come to you, your hands is open wide, your heart is open wide, Lord, to embrace us, not to condemn us, Lord, because in Christ there's no more condemnation. But to bless us, Lord, with your awesome presence and with your power, O oh God, so that, Lord, all the rest of our life, Lord, we have the freedom to praise the Lord, to love the Lord, to serve the Lord, and to be a blessing to others. And we give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen.